Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series. We are entering the year of 1987, and uh, we've got 88 after this, and then we're done with World Class because that's all that's available on the network. If I can find another source for um, other complete shows, I may add them in at a later date. Anyway, uh, we open 1987 with Lance Von Erich and the Dingo Warrior versus Master G and Matt Bourne. G and Bourne both managed by Percy Pringle. Um, again, I I still haven't gotten the Master G thing. I, I just don't I I don't get it. I don't understand uh, why he would be popular. I don't I don't see anything in his ability that makes me you know go out of my way to see. I, Lance von Erich has been a good investment. However, um, he hits a few shoulder tackles and things early. Um, Minor athletic ability from Master G, very basic stuff, stuff that he kind of, you know, bounces off. Warrior obviously becoming more more prominent, but he leaves uh, by the summer. So the Warrior is a guy who I think World Class was hoping to build around, and it didn't work out for them the way they planned. Um, Master G hangs on to Von Erich for the... Next several minutes of the match, Warrior with the handout stretched ready for the tag. Warrior comes in, Master G takes him over with some side headlocks and the like. Actually, somewhat surprising to me because Warrior gets some riding, uh, or Matt Bourne gets some riding time on the Warrior. Um, Warrior kind of forced to go a little longer than normal. It's amazing to me because I think they were trying to find a guy to really build around with the Warrior as a fundamental tag team in the area for you know a, a good bit of time they they try him with Lance Von Erich which is where he ends up being a tag team champion but also it tried him with Tony Atlas and said Scott Casey a time or two but obviously they don't see Warrior as a guy who they can build around in a singles way at least not yet not sure if they get there before he leaves first he Pringle on the outside happy with his uh charges and uh breakdown of things going on and uh, tag off and again uh, Matt Bourne back in Bourne gets blocked by the Warrior Warrior does uh, try to take a couple shots Bourne takes him down Bourne obviously a second generation wrestler who does not uh, um, you know he, he doesn't seem to like being in there with the Warrior tag off to uh, Lance Von Erich again. He hits the abdominal stretch. Uh, Master G comes in from behind. Warrior comes in to clean house with him. And um, Percy Pringle shoves Lance Von Erich off the top. One, two, three for, Von, uh, for uh, Von, uh, uh, Percy's team. And uh, eventually Warrior chases Von Eric away. The one, two, three attempt was made. However, the referee does finally call for a disqualification. Actually, uh, the visual pin is there, but the disqualification also there, as he saw Pringle use the weaponry, um, and so the official, which is Bronco Luvich, uh, cuts things off in that way. Then we go to the second match of the day: Al Madrill versus Steve Dahl. Dahl a relative newcomer to the sport, also maybe having half a dozen or so matches on TV, give or take, by this point. Uh, Dahl says, or it said he's from Texas. I did not know that. Anyway, um, Madrill takes him to the outside, and we see quite a few uh, brawling-type maneuvers, the use of the uh, announcer's table, timekeeper's table, and the like. Um, I don't understand necessarily why they use that table since there's virtually no one sitting at it almost ever. Anyway, so they send him back to the outside. Uh, Madrill obviously gets an advantage and uh, goes for it for quite a while there. Uh, Madrill brings Dahl back in the ring the hard way, and obviously he is going to be highlighted in the match. Madrill was here in 82-83. Uh, gets the victory and he is uh, pretty solid. He's become a better talker. One thing I learned in his 
time away, we uh, go to an interview with Brian at DSNL Madrill. Madrill basically sends the announcer away as quick as he can. Basically says that he and Brian Adias are the future of world class indirectly and that um, he's done everything he can for Adias. Adias now wearing sunglasses, more cocky than before. Uh, kind of calls out Kerry Von Eric, and uh, they're holding on to the tag team championships, are Madrill and Adias. So that's, that's to come there. Uh, we then kind of see... Uh, highlights from the Christmas night extravaganza, uh, Black Bart and Scott Casey. The match between these two, if Bart loses, he has to ride a donkey around the arena, and Bart does, in fact, lose, uh, so he has to ride that donkey. Um, and then we move through some other highlights of that particular card. Uh, I'm really not a fan of, of when they just clip this stuff to death. If, if you're going to show a match, at least show enough of it so people know what they're coming in on. I understand why they do it from a promotional standpoint, but at the same time, I also get frustrated with it nonetheless. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't clip a match to death without giving really clear instructions of what people missed. Anyway... Uh, main event of Bruiser Brody and Abdullah the Butcher in a cage. This time, no official. Escape the cage rules apply. Um, Brody goes after Abdullah. Both men are busted open by the point we join the match. Brody tries to kick Abdullah through the cage. Uh, many uh, minutes of brawling between the two. Both men by the door. Um... Tony Atlas gets sent away. Uh, Gary Hart comes climbing halfway up the cage and tries to stop Brody. I think he actually tries to handcuff him to the cage at a point. Uh, we then kind of see that break down and not go the, according to plan. Uh, Abdullah the Butcher does eventually win the contest. And that means Bruiser Brody leaves world class. So that is not good for him. They are also, Tony Atlas becomes involved in the closer to the finish of the match. So Atlas and Abdullah is where we're going next, at least in the next little while. And then we move to Steve Simpson, former television champion, among other things, against uh, Chuck West. Not exactly the best of enhancement talents. And that's kind of the way... We go with things there, uh, you know, hard shots, and then break down into the arm bar by Simpson. Simpson has been a good mid-card babyface for, for a while. Then we see him use the body scissors, among other things, and uh, West does manage to come back on him a little bit. West never really gets a clear decisive advantage, and um, Simpson... Manages to win with the top rope cross body. Kevin and Mike Von Erich versus Black Bart and Tim Brooks, your main event of the week. And obviously the Von Erichs are always on top in Texas. This is no different. Um, Mike takes the majority of early punishment. Kevin is still your world Champion, still weird to call a world champion in a regional territory, but anyway, um, Bart and Mike go at it for quite a bit, and arm bars, arm locks, and the like, very basic match. Uh, there is a point where Mike tries to get the claw on Bart in the uh, corner. Mike holds on to the majority of the match, actually. Uh, Kevin, I guess I would say... Kevin Von Erich um, taking, I wouldn't say a backseat role, but definitely a reduced role over what his role used to be. And uh, Killer Tim Brooks on the outside um, of the ring. Bart spends the majority of the match doing the selling. Bart, also a former world champion. A decision that I don't know that they really embraced completely when they did it. And... Uh, uh, Tim Brooks comes back in uh, and tag off isolation 
on Kevin Von Erich for a minute, and Kevin makes his way uh, through and manages to get choked and beaten up for a few minutes. We close the program with the Von Erichs gaining the victory, as is to be expected, and we are done with the first week in January 1987. Uh, as mentioned before, the entire run will be complete within the next couple of weeks, but uh, stay with us. We'll be back with more right after this.